the, the story there was, uh, you know, Coppola after the guy, I mean, the guy had six Oscars, Apocalypse Now. Did you ever see A Heart of Darkness, the documentary about the oh, making of Oh, yeah. That's great. Unbelievable. People forget he wrote Patton. Too. Right, and he was a great play. writer, yeah. you know, uh, and he, uh, but he makes all his money now. He bought Engel Nook Wineries, all his money. He's got no movie money. Yeah, yeah. So, and even the Dracula towards the end sure. that had a. Well, he a started a studio. I mean, with, yeah. he started American Zoetrope and and which is still in San Francisco. I was yeah. just I was just playing uh, Cobbs in San Francisco, and I I saw that that building still there, Zoetrope. So, but it's all he's got a private jet from Engel Nook Wineries. Uh, but that run he had, if you look at Patton and the, and, uh, and, uh, the conversation well, the and the two Godfather at, pictures and Apocalypse Now. Diane Keaton's career in the 70s. Yeah. All the Woody Allen movies. Oh, yeah. yeah. And the Godfather movies. Yeah. I mean, and Talia Shire, Godfather and the Rock and Rocky. That's right. Uh, I mean, you know, Diane Keaton is brilliant in all those Woody Allen things, uh, you know. And then she plays, uh, you know, Corleone's wife. And, and like, John Casal did, like... Five, five movies, for five, and yeah. they're all yeah. great. I yeah. think they all either won. They were all at least nominated for Best Picture. Yeah. He did The Conversation, Godfather 1 and 2. He did The, the Deer, Deer Hunter. Hunter was his last one. He got right. sick on that. And um, Dog Day Afternoon. Dog Day Afternoon. Right. Oh, Dog Day Afternoon so right. fucking great. I mean, amazing. Yeah, yeah. You know, think about Pacino won. and Dog Day Afternoon and then sent the for one. Oh, God. <laughs> That's what I mean. It's yeah. a retroactive Oscar. I mean, Dog Day Afternoon is one of the funniest movies ever. Fuck the, the, the drama. Uh, all that shit that Lamette got from them, just from those characters. But uh, do you know the story? Cazal was dating Meryl Streep. Yes, sure. And uh, told uh, Michael Cimino, said, my girlfriend's in a play. She's right for this bar. Beg them to see her. And he got, he got her into Hollywood. He died. And, you know, she moved on. <laughs> life. <laughs> there's life. <laughs> Do you imagine? He dies and she moves on to be Meryl Streep. Well, uh, Gilbert's obsessed with Sidney Lumet. She moves on to take a sel- oh, yeah. selfie with Ellen DeGeneres. Let me go. <laughs> Did you just want to crawl through the fucking screen? <laughs> Selfie with Ellen. Uh, well, Sidney Lumet, yeah. Oh, I mean, there's a talk about yeah. almost a perfect record. Yeah. Right? yeah. Yeah, we talk about him all the time. The pawnbroker. Um, Anderson tapes. You Prince can, of they go the on City. And Serpico. Tapes. Sure. Uh, Dog Day after New Prince of the City. Uh, oh, and, and, uh, and we were just network. talking before. And 12 Angry Men and Network. And Network. And, network, and yeah. even things like Murder on the Orient Express, where he did different stuff. Right. Unbelievable. Oh, and I like Bye Bye Braverman with George yeah. Siegel and yeah. Jack well, Gordon. Well, what about, uh, what about the verdict? a later movie? The verdict, um, yeah. unreal. Yeah. That, that's, yeah. Yeah. Well, but, but what I about want, The Night Falls on Manhattan? Another, you see that? Yes. Yeah. That's a really a great and run. Frank and I were just talking about a half hour ago about when the devil knows you're dead. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. Marissa Tomei. Great, the, great. Every dark yeah. thing that a human being could do, Philip Seymour Hoffman does in that movie. It's a great movie. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then to think about his real life with the heroin and everything. But every dark thing that you can do as a person, he does. Oh, yeah. And, and you got Albert Finney. That just fucking yeah. That movie, I forgot about that. Yeah. Then of course you have Gloria with Sharon Stone. Oh jeez. <laughs> How did that happen? Um, well, we'll all run the gauntlet. Lamette might be as perfect. It might have the best batting average. Yeah. Of any director. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. unless you want to go back to Billy Wilder. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he, he could say that. Sure. Here's one for you, Gilbert. Here's a trivia question about okay. the Godfather, and I bet already knows it. Which Godfather actor? He was in part two. Wrote a movie that starred Elvis. Oh my God. I don't know that. He was uh, a playwright. Oh, 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 I'm, 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 uh, 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 you know, uh, he, he told me Michael Corleone did this. Michael Corleone. Oh, Frank Frankie, 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 Frankie Five Angels. Yeah, Frankie yes. Pantangeli. Michael Gazzo. He was a Angel. Michael Gazzo. He was a playwright. He wrote a play yes. called Hat Full of Rain, which was made into yeah. a movie. Oh, I know Hat Full of Rain. Right? Oh, yeah. 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 And he wrote an Elvis movie. Oh, yeah. Which, yeah, which, no, which him Elvis I knew. movie? <laughs> that I wish I written down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it, there's there's not a lot Darryl, of great ones. Darryl, dig it up. Our, our crack yeah. research team. There's not a lot of great ones. The, 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 which Elvis fantastic. Yeah. You'll know this. Which Godfather actor also appeared in Moonstruck? Uh, Danny Aiello. Uh, well, Godfather 1. Oh, okay. Because t- Danny Aiello is one of the Rosado Correct. brothers. Yeah, we interviewed Danny about Okay. It. And yeah. Uh, yeah, Danny's a great interview. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Godfather oh, 1 and Moonstruck. Yeah. Um, Think about Cher's uncle. Oh, you know what? I don't. Here's the problem. I don't know Moonstruck. That oh, okay. I don't. I don't either. Uh, Louis I don't Louis Gus, oh, the guy Louis, that gets uh, up at the table oh, and makes no, the speech that, about okay. keeping. I the, never would have got yeah. that. Never would have got because I don't know Moonstruck. And this one, one you'll both know. Who played? But the Pantanzi question. That's a great Is question. That a good question. Yeah. Who played the young Clemenza in Godfather Two? Uh, oh, uh, Fra- uh, Fra- uh, Bruno Fra- Gantz. Bruno Kirby. Ah, Bruno nice Kirby. work, Bruno Kirby. We got it together. You guys are good. Yeah. Who's now dead? Right. 
Yeah, he passed he lost away. Bruno. Right? Yeah, Bruno yeah. Kirby. He was in a lot of great films. He was the young Clemenza and uh, a lot of great stuff. Yeah, The Freshman with Brando. That, to, to, I, to, I thought I would hate that because Brando's doing... It's fun. But it's well done. That's the guy that made The Did in-laws. you like that guy? The guy that the wrote The In-Laws, Andrew I, I don't know. I was a little I mean, It made me laugh. It, it made me laugh, but... I I thought I was going to hate it like yeah, crazy. Yeah. yeah, we had Johnny on the show, and I said to Gilbert, as Russo. We, yeah, when he yeah. was coming in, I said, "Do me a favor, let the show start before you ask him about killing two people." <laughs> <laughs> Is that true in real life? He says I, that. I, right? I I don't know how much of what he said. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, does he know the statute of limitations? There's no statute of limitations. Oh yeah, he said <laughs> murder. He said there's three people I can admit to. <laughs> What? I thought, oh, so after after like uh, four years or what? so, Henry you, Hill was the, on the on uh, oh Stern God. show, and he was going to take us on. He took some of the Howard TV guys on a tour of where people were buried, like oh, spiders or something. Shit. But he was so fucked up. It was he was just pointing <laughs> to like spiders buried over there. Like uh, that's the Empire State Building. <laughs> <laughs> and and I liked how as great a movie as Goodfellas is. Yeah. It's also like, you know, uh, Henry Hill's like practically handing out toys to oh, in no, an that's orphanage. That's such a great point. You got you to gotta realize he's yeah. telling the story. Right. Yes. So in every right. scene, he's outraged. What are you right. guys doing? Right. Oh, you're killing people. You're not killing somebody, are you? I didn't know you were a mobster. <laughs> <laughs> this is fucking bad. I thought you were luggage salesman. I know, the whole thing. <laughs> The whole Billy Bad scene. He's trying to like be a diplomat. Like, oh my everyone's God. fine. Billy gets a little out of line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. He does pistol whip the guy in the driveway. Yeah. Well, but that makes him only... look cool. Right. Because the guy just raped his girlfriend practically. Right. right. You know, right, right. He looks cool there. But uh, no, that's a great point. People don't realize that. He's telling the story. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Jimmy Burke was rotting in stomach cancer, the real Jimmy Conway in prison going, that's not how it fucking yeah. happened. <laughs> <laughs> I remember it a little differently, Henry. Yeah. I heard yeah. you talk about that scene. I think you were talking to, uh, on a, I heard you on another podcast, talking about the scene with Pesci where they go to see, where, played by Martin Scorsese's mother. Yeah. Where they oh, go yeah. back to the house where yeah, she pulls was. up the painting with right. the dogs. And, yeah. She was, uh, he, again, Scorsese could make like a forklift operator good in the movie. He just knew how to use his mother perfect. Cause she's, on, she, she's in Mean Streets. Yeah. When the chick is having yeah. a seizure. She's you know, in the King like, of yeah. Comedy. She's and the she's one like, yelling down the oh, stairs. That's so great. Yeah. That's so great. Ma! <laughs> He's got the tape recorder. Lower it, Rupert. Uh, but uh, yeah, that the detail in that dinner scene is so amazing because. Uh, De Niro plays the one guy who's all Irish, and he's the only guy using ketchup on the potatoes and eggs, and eggs <laughs> which is hilarious. I saw an interview with her about Raging Bull uh, when they, they interviewed Scorsese for 60 Minutes. I think like Morley Safer did it in the early 80s. And uh, she said, uh, I fattened him up for that. I, I, he came over. I made him uh, mozzarella omelets and homemade pizza, and yeah. I fattened him up. And then the, uh, Safer said to her, what about when he lost weight? And she looked at the camera like almost mad and said, yeah. that I had nothing to do with. <laughs> I had nothing to do with it. And his old man is yeah. funny, though. Know, like, like yeah, making the pork, walking, making walking the pork the in prison. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's with Pesci when he buys the farm. When, yeah. He, when he's, yeah. We baseball batted those two guys. <laughs> we baseball batted them. You couldn't recognize them. <laughs> one dog's looking that way, one dog's looking that way, and he's like, what do you want from me? What do you from want from me? me? <laughs> one dog's looking east, one's looking west. What do you want? Did you ever see my painting? <laughs> Don't pay no more religious painting money. Now, you're a sports guy, <laughs> yeah. and, you're, and you're a movie buff. Yes. Now, Gilbert knows nothing and about baseball sports. baseball players have very strange names. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, that, you got good at segues already with it. We do a mini show where we recommend movies, and Gilbert right. recommended Bang the Drum Slowly. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, De, Niro. De Niro. And De Niro he knows nothing o- about sports. Danny Aiello <laughs> told us he taught uh, De Niro how to throw a ball right. on the set of that Not movie. a good job. Who knows? <laughs> I mean, that is, I, 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 the acting's great, but that's a movie where, like, you know, uh, it, no one looks like they can play ball at all. <laughs> uh, and that was based on a Paul Newman. Was it? It was yeah, a TV, I didn't know that a live TV production right. with Paul Newman and George Papard. Uh, no, George Papard. Yeah. 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 That's good. Yeah. Michael Moriarty and then... Uh, 
Who, who, who's the, the, character, the great character actor who plays the, uh, the manager? I can't well, it's oh, Vinny Gardinia. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Vinny Gardinia. I can't, from, I can't yeah. remember. Right. He's sure. believable as a ball player. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Tom DeLuise is the... <laughs> <laughs> Charles Nelson Riley is the bad boy. <laughs> Vincent Gardinia. Nelson Hello! <laughs> I'd go with the 32. <laughs> I'd go with the 38 ounce, 32 inches. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty I'll, good. I'll be your manager. <laughs> That's pretty good, Artie. What, Fred Travellino used to do this bit. The one part, <laughs> I can't believe I just said that, but the one, he, it actually made me laugh. He did Charles Nelson Riley if he was Fredo in The Godfather. <laughs> like, why is he always looked over? Why? I don't know. I guess I'm just different. <laughs> They, uh, they, I remember last time I was in Vegas, there was a giant billboard right. that said a one man show, Rich Little, <laughs> as, as Jimmy Stewart. Wow. And wow. it's like, you know what this is. Did you yeah. want to go to that? even see it. Just yeah. for the car crash oh, value? Oh, my God. Yes. Because yeah. you already know it's like, well, uh, <laughs> oh, then I met John White. <laughs> hey, Pilgrim. <laughs> <laughs> and then I met Wal- Walter Brown. <laughs> Hours when, of that. <laughs> Remember when uh, I was on Johnny Carson? Yeah, yeah. He, he, uh, Jimmy. <laughs> for the for the audience for that for the four people who remember who Jimmy Stewart is <laughs> left alive. Uh, so many colostomy bags in that audience. <laughs> Do you like Pride of the Yankees? You're, you're, yeah, you're a big Yankee yeah. guy. Again, we talked about again, it again. The, the you know the acting when Babe Ruth's the best actor in a movie. <laughs> It's a class. When the doctor goes, yeah. give it to me straight, doc. Yeah, give me straight. three strikes. <laughs> <laughs> Gary Cooper's 62. Yeah. <laughs> well, we talk about the Babe Ruth story, too, which is absolutely oh, with fucking dreadful. With, yeah, oh, with ben, oh, with the when he points? <laughs> the, <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> when he does a Jackie Gleason <laughs> point. This, Get out, Norton. <laughs> <laughs> this ball is going to the moon. <laughs> It ain't going over the center field fence. It's going to the moon. <laughs> that is, yeah, real sorry. He didn't leave me with the mess, dick <laughs> ball coach. <laughs> Come on down, Norton. <laughs> Here goes my whole stick ball team. <laughs> yeah, you could tell Bendix wasn't a ball player. Oh, my God. Yeah. It's hilarious. You want, I'll recommend one to you. The, the, one of the best yeah. bad sports movies ever. It's called The Joe Torre Story. Are you serious? With... Paul Sorvino. Oh God! It is some of the the shittiest, I know. but coming back in the funniest me. way, worst acting. He he plays he plays Joe Torre uh, right after they win the '96 series, and Robert Loggia plays his brother Frank, who gets cancer. Right, remember. Uh, it's yeah. so amazing. Yeah, it's two so, great actors. But, yeah, no, yeah. I know, but oh, it's like now just, what about the one? Oh, the Jimmy Purcell. Oh, the first uh, strikes out. Strikes Tony Parker. Yeah, yeah, another, Tony another Perkins. Charles yeah. Nelson Riley. Yeah. <laughs> His Bible is the greatest Red Sox ever, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Man, it ran the bases backwards. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, run. He did a lot of things backwards. <laughs> <laughs> as a Yankee fan, I love that he played a great Red Sox. <laughs> <laughs> Richard Simmons as Ted Williams. <laughs> yeah. oh, that's amazing. Yeah, the Jimmy Peer. The Fear Strikes Out. Yeah, that's right. the one. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's wrong. Paul Lynn as Babe Ruth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to hit a home run for you, kid. Before you die in the hospital, I'm going to hit a home run. <laughs> Holy shit. I know you might die before the game, but but trust me on it. (laughs) Throw me the ball, son. (laughs) Don't be afraid. Throw me the ball. Oh, that's Paul Linda's Babe Ruth. I would you see if I were if I were like a studio head, I'd finance that in two seconds. Because <laughs> you have to dig up Paul Lind. And it's Babe Ruth to block. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. They 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 interviewed on I, I on one of those baseball documentaries. It might have been the Ken Burns ones. They they interviewed Babe Ruth's old roommate on the road, and he was just like this shitty player they just paid to like maybe watch Oh, Jimmy out. Reese. It might have been Jimmy yeah, Reese. Yeah, he Jimmy. was like nine. 110. He was like nine yeah. at the time. Yeah. <laughs> he's telling yeah. the story. He 
because, yeah, the babe loved playing practical jokes on me. I remember one time we were on the road. I think we were in Pittsburgh. I was in the shower. And I'm all soaked up, and I uh, I feel a warm stream on my back. And I look behind me, and there's the babe naked with a girl urinating on my back. And he was laughing. God, he thought that was funny. <laughs> Naked with a broad pissing on his back. <laughs> God, he thought that was funny. <laughs> oh shit! So, Artie, we asked this of every guest. What did you watch as a kid? Whoa. What did you? What did you? What Not did you, my weight. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I'll take Artie Lang the block. <laughs> Uh, not, well, not, I, I watched the I watched the Honeymooners. Yeah, uh, my 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 mother and father put a, a black and white TV about five inches big in my room when I was like maybe seven. Mm -hmm. And at uh, back in the seventies in New York on Channel Eleven at eleven o'clock they had the Odd Couple. Eleven thirty they had the Honeymooners. That's and then right. I think Burns and Allen. Was oh, there. that's yes, right. Yeah, yes. okay. that's right. So I watched the Honeymooners and the Odd Couple every night. No, no exaggeration for, for seven years, so I could I could recite every honeymooners every that, All the first 39. time. First time I saw Gilbert do stand up was at Caroline's at the Seaport. It was my twentieth birthday. We all went, and uh, you did the bit of uh, uh, you know Ralph Cramden and Casablanca. <laughs> You're getting on that plane with Vic <laughs> Lazaro. Yeah, so I mean that was just like the ultimate. <laughs> I thought that was amazing. Yeah. So I I that's I watched that religiously. Of course, a lot of sports. Yankees being from here. Knicks, Giants, but um, uh, the Abbott and Costello movie every Sunday. Uh-huh. Uh, from 11, oh, yeah. From 11.30 oh, yeah. yeah. to 1. Oh, yeah. Sundays, 11.30 to 1 uh, in the 70s on Channel 11, an hour and a half. Uh, Abbott and, and if only I had fast forward to go through the Andrews sisters. <laughs> oh, right. Oh, yeah. And all the songs. I watched oh, yeah. every Abbott and Costello. What was your favorite Abbott and Costello? You know what? I liked Abbott and Costello... Uh, Meet the Killer. I like that yeah. one because uh, Carlos Freddie, yeah. Freddie Phillips. Yeah. <laughs> it's and, weird yeah. come because along. the title was Abbott and Costello Meet the Killer. Boris Karloff. Uh, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I just yeah, yeah. Meet the Killer. Yeah. They just tell you who the guy. Yeah, is. Yeah. yeah. In the title. <laughs> That's hilarious. I mean, I uh, loved Abbott and Costello Meet Frankenstein. Uh, that's that's yeah. that that's. That I almost said that. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. as good as it gets. Yeah. But um, a couple actually said before he made Godfather three, they said the only Godfather that would make sense after two was the God the Abbott and Costello meet the Godfather, <laughs> <laughs> and he basically should have made that. Oh yes. But uh, yeah, I watched every Abbott and Costello and I memorized all of those. Yeah. I, I love the first King Kong whenever that was uh -huh. on. Um, they used to show those on Thanksgiving. Uh, yeah, they used to the, show like Mad Monster Party. I'm trying to think of monster Kong. movies that I, I love. The first King Kong I thought was unfucking believable. That one. In Seventy six with Jeff Bridges. Oh, oh my God! God it's oh, it's Jessica it's, Lang it's and so Charles, Charles Grodin. Grodin. Charls Grodin is the heavy. Oh, the way he steps on Charles Grodin at the end. <laughs> and Rene Aubergenois. Yeah, that's right. Is in that one. And, right. and the the scary part about it is you've got Rick Baker. Yeah, who's, yeah. Who's a brilliant the makeup guy? guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and in there, it's a laughable. It, it, yeah. it, it, it was it was bad in a funny way. It's a credit to Bridges as an actor that he actually comes off not terribly. Well, no, I know he, he pulls as, up, but back yeah. then you don't yeah. realize how great he is. Right. What do you think of the 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 latest one, the Peter Jackson one? I you know I still like the first. I saw one it better. Yeah. Because of what? But I mean, there's impressive shit. Yeah, it's visually. Oh, it's very yeah, it's impressive. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I, you know, I, I and old movies. I loved old movies. I remember watching some like it hot for the first time. I remember, you know, when The Godfather was on TV. My old man who had a crazy sense of humor. I was like nine years old. He said, "You got to watch the scene." He he made me watch the horse head scene. <laughs> you know, <that> <laughs> John Marley. <laughs> yeah, and I'm yeah. like, oh, what the? Fuck? I'm like a nine. I'm like, my head's exploding. <laughs> Uh, but, um, yeah, you know, so uh, probably similar stuff uh, to what probably Gilbert watched. But Abbott and Costello and the Honeymooners and the Odd Couple, religiously. They used to show those A&C a movies. You remember, Gil, on Saturday morning? And they had the popcorn theme song. Oh, yes. Dun, dun, on Channel 11. Channel 11. Right. It's amazing how we were able to, because like Gilbert, I'm probably not as good as he is, but so much... You know, it's amazing how we know the stuff verbatim from just watching it once every once when it was on because you didn't have VCR, sure. you, know, you couldn't rewind, watch it again. We just saw it whenever it was on, and you memorized. It. Yeah, 
literally, I, I think I could have went to medical school with the, with the, uh, yeah, exactly. with the brain I fucking know. function I, I, I wasted on it. Me too. Oh, oh, it's incredible. Yeah. I can't tell you the Pythagorean theorem, but I could do every honeymooners. You know? And I remember, like, uh, I would watch, like, the Bowery Boys. Yeah, I used to love that. You know, it's a great one of my favorite Bowery Boys movies, uh, Dead End with Humphrey Bogart. Oh, yes. oh yeah, with the uh, Dead End kids. Really young one. When, yeah. when, uh, the, the the poor kids are right next to the. They beat up the rich kid yep. living in yep. the high yeah. rise, and uh, when uh, he comes back and he sees his old girlfriend, and it like the light hits her just right, and you know she's a whore. <laughs> and he's like, why don't you starve first? <laughs> Uh, that's the, I love Dead End. Yeah, um, you know well, the Bowery I, Boys. I like. Them. I forget. I think it's. Oh, I think it's Angels with Dirty Faces. Oh, that's, yeah, they're that, My father yeah. made me sit yeah. down and watch that. The ending and you where know. Cagney. Uh, oh, Bogart's confronting Cagney. He right. Goes, uh, he goes. You used to, you used to ask me things. Now you're telling me. <laughs> and then Cagney goes so, and Bogart goes. Show my feelings is getting hurt. <laughs> Right, <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah, no, that the end that that might be the best ending ever. Oh yes. Or the the, the ending. You know, it's funny. I would put that ending and Angels with Dirty Faces or the, the taking a Pelham one two three with Walter Matthau. Well, we love yeah, that. We love with that. Walter Matthau. Uh, and again with these remakes like the Denzel Washington and and John Travolta and the new one, I couldn't even bring myself to watch. Well, it. Gilbert and I we, we obsess over those kind of sixties and seventies movies where you get to see old New York seventies like. Uh, but well, like Pelham the, 1, 2, 3 and Serpico. The seven and Ups. Seven Ups is a great ups one. Seven Ups has great shots yeah. of Hell's Kitchen yeah. in the 70s. Super Cops, if you've never uh, seen Super it. Super Cops, yeah. I love. Yeah. Um, the In-Laws. Yep. Yep. Uh, yeah. Uh, now you're talking about the in-laws with Michael Douglas <laughs> and Albert Brooks. God. <laughs> Me and Danny talk about that. I get, you get douche chills. Albert Brooks like one of the funniest yeah, guys. Like, how does he? Yeah. I mean, how big does the paycheck have to be? Big. Why remake it? Just say it's another movie. Say it's these yeah. two guys. Do, why do you have, like got to call it the fucking in-laws? And, and, and another movie that looked like they were trying to make remake the in-laws was that terrible one. With uh, Eugene Levy and uh, what's his name? Can you be a little more specific. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah. No, the guy, the guy who's in the credit, the black actor in the credit card commercials. Oh, Samuel uh, Jackson. Tracy Samuel Morgan. Jackson. Samuel Jackson. <laughs> now, what is that movie? Eugene Levy. Uh, they, I, I know what you're called. Oh, the, the man. man. The man. the man, the man, yeah. And it's also, he's also Never like even saw it. a dentist who gets <laughs> yeah. his Oh, okay. So and I like it's Eugene so it's Levy a and Sam, I like Eugene Levy and Sam Jackson, yeah. but again, it's yeah. like, it, it really goes to show you, move, uh, for a movie to be great, that's why you got to appreciate the great one. So much shit has to come together and all work. The directing, the ending. So oh. much shit could fuck it up. It's always an accident. Uh, yeah, oh, well, yeah. 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 oh, and talk yeah. about getting uh, two extremely talented people to remake a film badly. I, I know. I guess it's money. I, you know, look, shit. But I, there's, there's another one. Peter Falk and Woody oh, Allen. Oh, the Sunshine as the, Boys. And the yeah. Sunshine Boys. Why yeah. do that? Yeah. that I, mean, no, I mean, Woody Allen and Peter Falk probably, you know, from Colombo alone, Peter Falk's probably got an island. And yeah. Woody Allen, <laughs> Woody Allen, like, do you have to do that? Yeah. What about Steve Martin's career? Like, I mean, he has done so much more to hurt comedy than help it. Oh, the, my God. See, he, does he have to remake Sergeant Bilko? Right. And, and the Panther. by the dozen. The pink fucking uh, Panther? I know, it's sacrilege. And, and the idea that You're was... Steve Martin. You should know better than Take another movie. What, what makes me mad is they titled it The Pink Fucking Panther. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it should have been. It should have the been pink The Pink Fucking, fucking Panther. Pen. <laughs> With a giant lit up question mark. <laughs> the Pink Fucking Panther. I'm making The Black Panther. <laughs> the Black Panther would be a better. That's the new one. It's <laughs> You and Newton <laughs> does some of the best physical comedy you've ever seen. And you're an, you're an odd couple person, too. You were the uh, old deal. Huge, Randall Klugman. Huge. Okay. And, yeah. and Mathau Lemon. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. yeah. Matt yeah, yeah. That's oh, another movie Matt where you can Al see old New York locations. Mathau and that was great. Yeah. Probably the best Oscar. 
I think I, if I had to pick, I'd go Mathau, Tony Randall, if I could pick and choose. But Lemon's great. But Mathau. And Art Carney was the original Felix And Klugman's great. Could you imagine seeing Mathau and Art Carney yeah. on we, fucking stage? We, we oh, just, yeah. my God. <laughs> Doing we, that play. We just had Paul Dooley on the show. You know the uh, actor yeah, Paul yeah, Dooley? Sure, and he yeah, understudied uh, Carney. Oh, he Car- did. Carney went in to dry out. Yeah, he was he supposedly played, a worse yeah. drunk than Gleason. Now, yeah. I saw about ten minutes... Of the new odd couple. Oh, God. It's Matthew Perry. I don't think I, I, I think I would literally throw up. I don't yeah. think I could do it. <laughs> I, th- I think I heard Matthew Perry once in an interview. I think he basically said he invented sarcasm. I'm, I'm also, I think he said that. <laughs> Norm, Norm was on Saturday Night Live. Norm tells the best fucking stories about some of those celebrities that went through there. And, and, and uh, Matthew Perry had an assistant and said, you know, Matt, want, he said to Norm, Matt wants to do a sketch that he wants you to be in where uh, he talks like he does on Friends. He calls it Matt speak. And Norm said, what are you talking about? He goes, he goes, well, you know, he invented a way of talking, the way he talks on Friends, Matt speak. And he showed him a clip and Norm said, are you talking about sarcasm? <laughs> Very called sarcasm. He renamed it Matt Speak. Hilarious. <laughs> and Norm goes, You're talking about sarcasm? What about the they, black they, odd couple, they, they should have just said to him, Oh, that was really good. <laughs> I think somebody, one of, the, one of the younger writers said, I think Matthew Perry's a genius. And I, think, I think that's what it was. And Norm said, is he good at math or something? <laughs> Yeah, the black odd couple with Damon Wilson. With the and, black honeymoon. And Rod Glass. Rod, yes. Uh, yeah, and then there was the and black Rod, honey, the, Rod, Rod Glass yes, from Barney with, Miller. With um, Cedric, Cedric the, Enter- the Entertainer. If you got the, the word the entertainer in your name, that's a lot of pressure. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the group in sync. You better be in fucking sync, man. <laughs> if, you got, if you say the entertainer, you better be good. That's a lot of pressure. Who played Norton in that one? I don't remember. Was it oh, Tracy oh. Morgan? <laughs> Would have been better. Might have been. Your mother is a blabbermouth. Oh, Mike Epps. Mike Epps. Mike Epps. <laughs> was Ed Norton. Thank you, Dara. Mike Epps, of course. Uh, who could forget him? So but, anyway, Don Rickles. I was going to move on to Rickles, just in the interest of time. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. Rickles. We do a six-hour episode. Uh, he, uh, yeah, he, uh, he was in Dirty Work. It's the first scene I shot. Hear me. I'm, it's Don Rickles <laughs> calling me a baby girl. You know, the, so I finally got it right. right. I got a take, and then he moved over to Norm. But the, the thing he started doing that was hilarious. He was insulting Norm as Norm McDonald, not as the character. Oh, let's go. So I would love got, to see that. How did you get a movie? Cut. We can't use that, Don. You got His name's Mitch. In the in the movie, insult him as Mitch. He started insulting the script. Who wrote these jokes? <laughs> and then eventually we got it. That he's hilarious in it. And uh, but uh, I finally got it. I think I, Norm I, never didn't laugh. I think in the movie, Norm is laughing. Yeah. I heard in Casino when uh, Rickles was doing the scenes with De Niro. Yeah. He would did, uh, Rickles would stop in the middle of the scene. Right. Go, that's it. Cut. You left out three motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he the, the, the press for that movie was hilarious because Rickles would goof on De Niro. And De Niro in real life is just like a mannequin. You could just goof oh, on yeah. him. He just sits there. <laughs> and Rickles, like, he mumbles. He mumbles. Hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then Rickles is being Rickles, and De Niro's laughing at everything. Uh, but, yeah, did you ever see the actor's stu- inside the actor's studio with De Niro? Oh, yeah. Okay, he, he said that, that that James Lipton guy says to him, what's your favorite curse word? And, you know, most of those people try to be goofy and oh, say, oh, God. darn it, and stuff. Yes, <laughs> the, the yeah. The dead serious goes, I don't know, cocksucker, motherfucker. <laughs> 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 and Lipton's like, cocksucker, motherfucker.